I think I might have hit him in the back to slow him, and then uh, Warwick let loose with a shotgun a couple of times, and then they got down here, and he was fighting the dogs and tearing the dogs up, and I was able to put one above him down through his neck. I'm just so excited. I tell you, it's just, it's an unbelievable. It's, a, it's a, by far the biggest cat I've ever taken. My second trip back to Zimbabwe with the leopard with hounds. Uh, this morning. This is the latest hunting fad in Southern Africa, hunting leopards with packs of dogs. The dogs are specially bred and highly trained, and once they've been put onto the trail of a leopard, they're not likely to stop until they've cornered the beast. Then the wealthy overseas client moves in to make the kill and bag the trophy. Turned the hounds loose and went over a few of these big rock trophies. Hounds bade this cat up probably within 20 minutes. Watch the dogs. Like it. Like it. It was so exciting. I mean, the dogs and the cat fighting. Don't leave him. Don't. <laughs> waiting and waiting and waiting. Oh, it's a nice cat. You know, the biggest thing about taking one of these cats is you want to come out of this thing with no dead dogs and no scratched up clients and scratched up hunters and so that just makes a lot of difference and it's just very very exciting high adrenaline rush hunt hunting leopards with dogs has been going on for some time but it's the first time visuals like these have been shown this video material was obtained by the SPCA, who handed it to special assignment. Earlier today, we were threatened with legal action if we dared broadcast it. Wait till that dog moves. Wait, 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 wait. No. Bill Bray is one of the American hunters who came to Zimbabwe to bag a leopard with the help of hounds. I have a 48 month period that I scheduled all of the sheep in the world, all the bears, all the big game, everything I could think of. And I really consider myself a consumer hunter. I hunt a lot of animals I've never seen before and I'll probably only hunt them one time. So I'm no expert on any animal. In fact, a lot of them I've just never laid an eye on until I shoot them. But the dangerous game here is something I'm not used to. In fact, the other day, uh, charged by a leopard. I've shot a lot of things running away from me, but I've never shot them coming to me. The safari hunting industry in Southern Africa is a huge money spinner, but it's also highly competitive. Safari operators are under extreme pressure to come up with new products that will attract the fickle and often easily bored overseas clients. the elephant, the buffalo, the sable over there, the wildebeest, and the zebra down there. Mark, Mark Butcher is a Bulawayo-based Zimbabwean safari operator. Just over five years ago, he was at the forefront of a new hunting fad. He started experimenting, tracking leopards with hounds in Matabili land. He's since conducted more of these hunts than any other operator in Zimbabwe. I've been selling safaris now for 15 years or something. I was absolutely staggered by the response from the overseas market when we first started to talk about leopard with hounds. Um, I hadn't seen anything like it. Uh, and it, sitting back and thinking about it, it's actually interesting because I spoke to a lot of guys and said, why are you guys so keen on it? Um, and particularly the North Americans, but to a certain extent, the Europeans too, uh, they have been using hounds to hunt with as part of their culture since forever. And um, they hunt mountain lions with hounds, they hunt bears with hounds, uh, and for them, the big question is not whether or not we should be using hounds, but why the hell haven't we, haven't we done it 15, 20, 20 years ago? Why has it taken us so long to switch on to it? As the hunts gained in popularity, other Zimbabwean and Southern African safari operators started to cash in on the hype. One of the challenges was to breed the ultimate leopard hound. Houndsmen imported dogs from the United States and crossbred them with local dogs. 
But one safari operator and houndsman based in the Eastern Cape had the edge over his competitors. These two hounds are crossbred. They're used for the hot scent running and a very important part of the pack. <laughs> Gary Miles has been breeding hounds for decades. In this television program made in the Eastern Cape in the mid 80s, he showed off the skills of his hounds in hunting so-called problem animals, lynx, caracal and jackal. Miles and his partner and nephew Warwick Evans now specialize in leopard hunting. They take their hounds to Zimbabwe where they're in high demand among safari operators. All the areas we're hunting in Zimbabwe, you can't track them in by eye. So it wouldn't be an option to do it without the dogs with the tracking method. In Botswana, we're obviously in the sand field there where we're help, helped a lot by the bushmen. We do it slightly differently there. The bushmen track them in until the track is fresh enough for the dogs. And then you unload the dogs and you do the rest of the dog. The leopard with hound hunts would have continued unnoticed. But then, just over a year ago, the Zimbabwean SPCA found out about them. Take your time, make sure you're a good shot. Take your time. Good shooting! The animal welfare organization was outraged and started an international outcry against the practice. Since then, the SPCA's Merrill Harrison has been fighting a lonely battle. You know, people are afraid on issues like this of speaking out, people within this country. People have phoned me, hunters have phoned me, and said uh, that they disapprove of it. After the outcry, uncontrolled leopard hound hunts were stopped, but overseas clients, especially the Americans, were hooked. They insisted on hunting leopards with hounds. The Zimbabwean government then agreed to allow trial runs. Nearly 40 permits were issued, and trial runs started a few months ago. They'll continue until the end of the year. We, we were absolutely flabbergasted to find that a backward step had been taken and that hunts, even trial hunts, so-called trial hunts, were going to be allowed. Why don't we experiment on it? Because there is demand. But then we are doing it under controlled conditions, under the quota that has been prescribed by CITES, and under monitoring by the relevant department of National Parks and Wildlife Management. There is great concern about what the new hunting fad will do to the leopard population. Renowned conservationist Viv Wilson has done extensive research on big cats. He's now updating his research on Zimbabwe's cheetah and leopard numbers. Leopards are not considered endangered in Zimbabwe, but they are listed as threatened by extinction by the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species. Zimbabwe is allowed to hunt 500 leopards a year. Many years ago, the director of national parks felt that there was about 35,000 leopards in Zimbabwe. Those figures were quoted merely because we needed to have some sort of baseline data so that we could get a CITES permit to shoot and export a certain number of leopards. And the quota, I think, at that time was set at 500 leopards because they felt if we had 35,000 leopards, we could safely take off 500 leopards a year and it wouldn't affect the population. However, nobody has ever done a detailed survey of leopard in this country. So we don't really have the slightest clue what the leopard population is. Uh, I admit, yes, uh, it is high time we, we re-looked at the uh, research to find out exactly what are the trends, what is the home range like, and so on. That, I admit, has to be done. But that can be done in parallel to hunting, because I don't believe we should do it like uh, other countries have done to say, you stop hunting until we know how many leopards we have. You know, on a 10-day hunt, first day, if we're done in an hour and a half, uh, 
I don't know what he's going to do for the rest to of the time. To the overseas but... clients, using hounds to hunt leopards anyway, is a quick, really effective way of bagging the sought-after trophy. Fourteen. Fourteen nights sitting in a blind. To get a leopard. Uh, Here it took me an hour and a half. But hunting leopard with hounds is far more exciting. It's far more sporting um, than hunting by traditional methods, i.e. bait and, bait and blinds. So if you're hunting out of a blind, you're sitting there, and the leopard has no chance at all. He doesn't know you're there. He gets up in the bait, and boom, that's that. It's not much of a hunt. Turn the hounds loose and <laughs> hounds bait. Some it. hunting outfits market the experience as the thrill of a lifetime, or the most exciting leopard hunt ever. They insist that it is a sporting way to hunt. I ended up up in these rocks here, and Ted got around here and shot up there and killed the thing, and it's just uh, unbelievably exciting. Uh, the hounds are making a noise. You're getting in a, close to a leopard. He's often, he roars a little bit, so it makes it a little more exciting. So it was very exciting, and it's sort of dangerous. To me, sport hunting is when you go out and you get on your flat feet and you track the animal down with a tracker and a, and a professional hunter, and you spend hours walking in the heat and everything else, and you find your animal and you shoot it. And, and, and I believe... I don't believe that's a bad thing. The big hunting dogs are highly efficient, and some safari operators have boasted a 100% success rate. Others say the leopards still have a chance to escape. These leopards are very experienced in evading uh, animals that follow his trail. Uh, and they learn this, I believe, from um, hyenas and jackals and things. So when those hounds are following the trail, we see leopards uh, frequently that when it gets warm like it is right now, walking onto rocks like those over there, where they know that their scent is blown away quickly and the hounds lose the scent and that's it. But I believe, knowing dogs and knowing leopards, I reckon you once you've got the leopard scent, the dogs have got the leopard scent, I would believe there's almost a 99% chance that that's a dead leopard. Wait till that dog moves. Wait, 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 wait. Now. And once the leopard is chased into a corner, the guns come out. Anybody who thinks that a leopard up in these hills that we have around here uh, is, is helpless, doesn't know leopard. These, these leopards that we hunt up here are smart, they're strong, they're fit, they're incredibly aggressive. Uh, they are more than able to look after themselves. A, 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 a trapped leopard under those circumstances isn't a very, very aggressive animal. But he still won't stand much of a chance against, against a bunch of people with guns and against a whole lot of dogs. The leopard has got virtually no chance. Well, yes, I'm sure it is, it is cruel, but it's no, no more or no less cruel than any other method of hunting. Um, and we can anthropomorphize about how a leopard feels when it's being hunted um, we don't actually know that. The SPCA's campaign against these hunts is not only out of concern for the leopards, they are also worried about the well-being of the hunting dogs. There have been instances where dogs have been mauled. Um, most of the injuries are small. I've been mauled, many professional hunters in this country have been mauled by leopards. It's, that's not an uncommon scenario for pro professional hunters or professional hounds, because that's what these animals are. We go into close quarters with danger, dangerous animals and uh, we take injuries. Oh, I can't say to you that they don't get hurt. They do get the occasional clout from the leopard if they get too brave and get in too close. Um, but it's, it's not nearly as bad as people say. I was shown a pack of hounds that came from South Africa. Actually, uh, many of them had lacerations on their paws and their ears and their noses. And the owner of the dogs told me quite happily that those were caused by leopards. Milton Mapukotera used to be a dog handler for some of the safari operators. He claims he was fired because he spoke out about alleged abuses. According to Mapukotera, some houndsmen use electric collars with powerful electric currents to train the hounds. Uh, these electric collars, uh, they've got three channels. They've got uh, number one, which is a uh, slow. Uh, number two, which is a medium, uh, it's on medium. Then this uh, number three is the highest one. 
if you shock with this highest one, the dog actually will go fall down straight out. It's so powerful. Because these are scent hounds, they go into the bush and they'll follow any scent. And so they've got to be trained to follow leopard scent. And that is done with an electric collar. I don't use electric shocking collars on our hounds. But uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that it's a bad thing. It's probably the best way to train a hound, especially a young hound, because with electric collar, you can punish it immediately as it's doing it, as it's chasing the wrong animal when you're training it. Dead impala are put out to attract leopards. The hounds follow the leopard tracks from the bait. Some safari operators allegedly also use the controversial method of tying live goats to trees to lure leopards. Although this method is not limited to leopard hound hunting, it has added to the controversy surrounding the hunts. There have been live baits used in the past. I don't think it's taking place anymore. Um, it's also a matter of opinion as to whether people are like that or not. Uh, I mean, nothing likes dying, whether you walk up to it and shoot it or whether you put it out as live bait. I'm sure no animal likes to be killed. So now listen to what the American hunters say about live bait. Uh, come across one of the goats that has just been killed. In fact, it's still breathing. When they are putting this live goat, they just tie the goat uh, around the tree, then they leave it on that tree. If we can get the leopards to eat, goats as baits instead of impala, that's less impala we need to shoot for um, bait animals. Um, and that's not necessarily live or dead. The sum they can spend at, uh, maybe five days, seven days, actually, uh, still, they'll be still alive, you see, and the jackals will be actually eating half, half, you see, until it actually it dies. The charge that hunting leopard with hounds is unsporting because it is 100% successful is probably the most common and inaccurate. Butcher would not allow the special assignment team to join a leopard with hounds hunt. Instead, he agreed that we could use this video. It's the same video that was used to lobby Zimbabwean cabinet ministers to allow trial hunts. Unlike the video the SPCA gave special assignment, this footage paints a rosy picture of the hunts. There are no visuals of leopards being killed or of the dogs being mauled. There's also no reference to live bait. Product, because it is quite simply exciting. Look, there's no question that um, we have come under the limelight. So we have nothing to hide. We have been completely open. They obviously don't want transparency. Otherwise, why weren't we invited? Why weren't we informed right from the start? And interestingly, one of the animal rights groups that's been the most vocal, um, we invited them uh, on one day if they're so sure that what they're doing is correct and ethical, then why not let everybody know about it? Uh, they refused point blank, the individual we spoke to uh, refused point blank to come out. A and B said that nobody else within her organization would want to come out. Uh, I even contacted one of the safari operators who his wife sort of smiled and said, yes, we were expecting you to make that request. A message came back, yes, that I could attend one of the hunts and then the following day sent out um, emails and uh, around the world uh, saying what a terrible thing this hunting leopard with hounds is. Since then we've found out hunts have taken place, um, over seven leopards have been killed already and not a word to Zimbabwe National SPCA. Initially strict conditions were set for monitoring the trials. Every hunt had to be videotaped and a national parks official had to go along. But special assignment is in possession of a document in which these conditions have since been changed. Videotapes alone can now be accepted. They want to produce uh, um, a fact, facts showing that this is totally acceptable. So nothing is going to be shown that will be controversial in any way. To Hitler Chumo of Bulawayo, it's all a question of money. Because he's poor, he says, it's illegal for him to use his dogs to hunt animals.
the, there is a difference between the dog that is being trained to track a leopard and a dog that follows any animal it sees. The way the law stands is that if somebody in the rural areas is hunting to feed his family and he takes six or seven dogs out into the bush and he is actually apprehended, caught, uh, his dogs are usually shot, confiscated, he's thrown in the cells for the night and fined. But if somebody's coming out here with US dollars, um, no problem, doors are open for them and they're allowed to hunt using hounds. Traditionally, Zimbabwe's tourism industry has been the third largest earner of foreign exchange. In 1999, hunting brought in 70 million US dollars but now many of the lodges stand empty and tourist numbers have dwindled. Our tourism figures, yes, they've declined over the past uh, two years, uh, probably down by 40%. In some areas, uh, arrivals have declined, obviously, because of the land redistribution programs uh, that we are undertaking, and also the perception that uh, uh, our country is, uh, is uh, not uh, safe. Obviously tourism is down and the hunting industry is taking a bashing. It isn't the only industry in this country. But I really don't see why standards should be lowered. The SPCA says that the Zimbabwean government is desperate for foreign currency. That's why they've bowed to pressure from overseas hunters and allowed the trial runs. The political instability here has really nothing to do with tourism. Hunting's important. It gets back to economics to this country. And uh, Robert hasn't interfered at all. We know we're short of forex and wonderful. We can have all these foreigners coming into the country and um, bringing much needed forex, yeah. And it is not true at all because we have been experimenting for, for longer than currently. It's so, it is so coincidental that we have introduced them when the country is uh, undergoing economic problems. But there is no relationship between the two. And we do not do them simply for the money. It was the abundance of wildlife that once attracted overseas tourists and hunters. Zimbabwe was widely regarded as a model of conservation. But since the land resettlement program started, the country's wildlife is under threat. On just one conservancy in the Zimbabwean Lowfield, 127 animals have been killed or maimed in poaching incidents in the last year. Among them, 21 eland, 26 zebra, 29 kudu and 18 warthogs. People need land, there's no doubt about that in my mind. However, one of the things that don't, is not taken too much into account um, is the wildlife is suffering. There is no question that um, a lot of the wildlife on private lands has been affected uh, very negatively by the land invasions and by political, uh, the present political events going on. In a country like this where you have many, many other problems at the present time, the leopard is the last thing that's on anybody's mind. If they experiment, then we should draw up some proper conclusions at the end of the day and not only look at the mighty American dollar. The leopard is extremely valuable to us as a flagship species, promote conservation of other species, A, and B, it's, it's, it's a very valuable one to, to, for us to market overseas. You mustn't look at it and say the return to the country, the return to the, uh, to the safari operator is so many thousands of dollars. We should also look at it from the conservation point of view and say, what is effect is this going to have on a leopard population if everybody throughout the country hunted leopards all the time with dogs? Well, that's what I did. <laughs> you sure did fucking clean up the deck. Thank you. Come here, man. Ich sag Ramme, sei sein auf die Kost. Ich mag auch nicht, David. Ich bin immer da aus. Ich bin immer da aus.